this morning is our Doctrine Sunday and we would like to reflect on one of the important doctrines of our faith which is the providence of God. When you say providence, it is God's loving care and concern on every aspect of our lives, on every event of our lives, and generally speaking, with the history of humanity. Let us try to think about the background of this account. We are reading about the life of Moses when he was born, the situation when he was born. But in chapter 1, we could see how Israel became a slave of the Egyptians. The Egyptians have formulated or have erected a strong civilization that is able to control the Nile Valley and the Nile Delta and the neighboring uh, places. So education, arts, and sciences is, are thriving at Egypt. And during the time when there is a great famine in the land, Joseph and his family, Jacob and his family, came to Egypt in order for them to survive. So, there comes a time after a series of 40, 40 years, 30 years, or for how many, how many years have passed, that Joseph have exerted a strong influence on Egyptian culture, Egyptian politics, and when he died, his influence with the country, with the empire, also perished. Until such a time that a pharaoh did not know about the contribution of Egypt, of, of Joseph, on the survival of their, of their nation. So, he saw, he saw the Israelites as a threat to his dominion. In chapter 1 of Exodus, we could see there that Israelites became a slave of the Egyptians for two reasons. The first reason is due to political reason. The Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, saw the growing number of Israelites. And among them were fine men, strong men, who are able to wield arms. And when an enemy state will uh, come to them and invade them, there is a great possibility that the Israelite men, Israelite people, will be joining forces with the invading army. That's why the king of Egypt told and made a law, a commandment, a command that all Israelites will be subject to slavery so that they could not be able to join forces with their enemies. The second reason is there are lots and many construction projects that are being done in Egypt during those times, and they need a cheap labor who will be constructing all the monuments and other construction projects of the government. So they see Israel, Israelite men as a cheap source of labor who could supply them with bricks and, of course, of uh, hands that will be constructing those uh, projects of the government. So that is the context of, of chapter 2, of, the, of chapter 2 of, of Exodus. And what we could see is that uh, the Pharaoh or the king of Egypt became so much desperate that he issued another law that all men or baby boy, or Israelite baby boy, will be put to death upon their birth. 
So, this is the situation. So, the Israelite people are praying. They are crying before their God. And they are asking for the person who will lead them out of that slavery. They are suffering day by day. And each day, the king is increasing the quota for the bricks that they need to create in order to supply in his projects up to the point that the supply of straw has been stopped and Israelites are required to look for the straw and at the same time they are required to double their production so the burden is too much for them the burden is too, too heavy for them to carry and they are longing for a person who will free them from those slavery. Sometimes we could relate in these situations as Filipinos who are also experiencing in different forms of slavery and burden day by day. Some of us have borrowed amount from a 5-6 at araw-araw sinisingil tayo ng 30 pesos. 50 pesos, tama yun, no? ganun lang kaliit naman ang, ang single ng 5-6 eh. Pero pag umabot niya ng isang linggo, ang laki pala nung ibinibigay mo. Imagine, if you borrow 500 pesos, you are required to pay 600 pesos. So that is 20%. Tama no? It's a 20% uh, of of the total, yeah. Additional 20% of the total money that you have borrowed. So there are lots of slaveries. There are different forms of slaveries that are existing in our society today. And we feel that we are burdened. The same is true with the current situation that we have. That there is a growing fear of the NCOV. Actually, ang mga tao parang praning na. Pag napahatching ka lang sa public spaces, di ba lalayuan ka ng mga tao, isipin nila, may NCOV. They were suspected to be carriers of NCOV. That's why they became self-quarantine. No? They, they subjected themselves to self-quarantine. And nobody would like to, to lend them or to, to give them some vehicle for them to ride. So they need to walk for how many kilometers <laughs> from the from the resort going to the to the health center because nobody will take them in their own vehicle even the public transportation will not uh, let them ride on the jeepney because of the fear of the NCOV so people are uh, desperate to avoid this kind of sickness. But there is an article in one of the jaryo uh, na aking binabasa. And the article is entitled, Blessings Turned Curses. Blessings Turned Curses. The premise of that article is that God has given us lots and lots of blessings. He has given us knowledge. He has given us that uh, creativity. He has given that us the, the gift of, of inventing some things. But since human beings become exploitative of the blessings and the favor and the gifts that God has given to us, we made so many inventions so many alteration of the natural process that weakens our own immune system and also uh, awaken those viruses and microorganisms that supposedly are non-existing. So, according to that article, this NCOV and other viruses that have surfaced in the past months, past years, are a result of human intervention, a result of uh, human carelessness. That's why we are suffering. That's why we are experiencing those sickness. We are experiencing those, uh, what, so what we call natural disasters. It is because we 
have made that for ourselves. That's why the conclusion of his article, he said that, uh, sabi niya sa conclusion ng kanyang article, when man plays God, kung ang tao daw ay magjujos josan we are bringing self-destruction. We are bringing destruction to ourselves. When we become, uh, when we control everything around us, even the nature, without observing the proper process, the natural process, we are bringing destruction to ourselves. Because we look at ourselves as conquerors rather than harmonizers with the creation of God. There is some problem with our mindset. We, we, th we think that we are the conquerors of this nature, of the blessings, of the favor of God. But we need to think and we need to remember that we need to live in harmony with God's creation rather than conquering God's creation. Actually, that is the concept of shalom, the concept of peace. Living in harmony with God, with ourselves, with others, and with God's creation. We do not look at ourselves as conquerors of everything, but we look at ourselves as people who are living in harmony with God's creation. So in this passage, Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, we could see the providence of God in four situations. First, we could see the providence of God through the courage of the midwives. In chapter 1, verses 15 to 22, we could see the courage of the midwives. Courage is defined as the moral and mental strength. The moral and mental strength to pursue what is true, what is right, and what is just. That is the courage. Sometimes tayo mga Pilipino, we Filipinos have a wrong concept of courage. Kasi sa atin, ang tapang ginagamit natin sa masama. Ay, matapang yung taong yan. Pag nakita niya may trap kum, dire-diretsyo lang siya kahit wala siyang helmet, hindi siya naka-proper ng damit, May may kasuutan na tamang kasuutan pag tayo sumasakay sa motorsiklo, ano? At meron dapat tayong lisensya at alam dapat natin kung ano ang limits ng ating lisensya. Tama, no? Tama yan. But sometimes we use the, that courage in a wrong way. When we know that there is a traffic enforcer and we don't wear the helmet and we don't carry the proper license, we still drive. Because we look at ourselves as a person of courage. But by definition, courage is the mental and moral strength to pursue what is true, what is right, and what is just. So when you see something that is wrong, you need to stand in order to defeat that wrong or to correct that wrong, to make that wrong right. Amen. Ayan yung gusto sabihin ng courage. Itong mga dalawang midwives na ito, when they received the direct command of the king to kill all men, or oh boy, baby boys, they stood in courage. Even though they said, they did not tell the king, oh king, we could not do that. But they took courage. They took courage. To let the baby Israelite boy live. Nagkaroon sila ng tapang. So what we could see here, there are two instances when these two women, these midwives, show their courage. First, they defied the direct command of the king. Kagaya ng sinasabi din sa book of Acts. Sabi sa book of Acts, we rather obey God rather than men. We choose to obey God rather than men. So ganun ang ginawa ng dalawang midwives na ito. Meron silang courage na lumaban o wag sundin ang direktang utos ng hari. 
It is a good example for us as Christians who are living in this present world that people makes the wrong right. Ginagawa nila yung mali na mukhang tama. And sometimes we Christians, hindi natin napapansin na parang sumusunod na tayo sa sistema na yan ng sanlibutan. That's why the book of Romans chapter 12 ay patuloy pong nagpapaalala sa atin. Chapter 12 verse 1. Let, anong sabi ng kwan? Do not be, tama no? Do not be conformed with the patterns of this world, but be transformed. Yan ang nais ng ating Panginoon. So it takes courage upang tayo po'y manandigan kung ano ang tama at kung ano ang dapat sa harapan ng ating Panginoon. And then the second thing na makikita po natin, kung paano po natin uh, makikita yung providence ng ating Panginoon is the care of the mother. There is that care of that mother. In Exodus chapter 2 verses 2 to 3, we could see here the mother. The mother of Moses is Jochebed. And this mother, when she saw her child, his, her baby, she saw the baby beautiful. Nakita niya yung kanyang anak. Gwapong anak. May potential na anak. Ganun, no? Actually, lahat naman ng nanay, ganun din naman lahat ng nanay. Eh. Lahat ng nanay, ang anak niya niya, gwapo. Ang anak niya, maganda. Ang anak niya ay matalino. Lahat naman ng nanay, ganun, no? Because mothers could see the beauty in their child children. Mothers could see the beauty of their children. Imagine naman, part ng katawan ng nanay yung bata for a period of Nine months, isa lang ang dugo na nanalaytay sa kanila. Kung anong kinakain ng nanay, yun din ang nutrients na pumapasok sa bata. Kung ano ang heartbeat ng nanay, yun din ang heartbeat ng bata. Nakakonect ang dalawa. Tama yun ano? It, they are connected with one another. And when the mother saw her child, she, she saw the child beautiful. She saw the child beautiful. At sayang pag ito'y aking papatayin. Oo, so palang infanticide nung unang panahon. And then, what we could see here is that in verse 3, noong dumating na sa 3 months ng bata, with the child, the baby is already 3 months old, she could no longer hide the child. So what she have done, she made a basket out of reed, papyrus reed, and uh, waterproofed it and place the child there lovingly and place in a place where the child is safe and secured. So the care of a mother. If Moses has a different mother, could they do the same thing? Kung kayo din ang nanay, pwede nyo bang magawa yan? You could defy any law? just for the survival of your child. Napakagandang halimbawa ni Jokabed. And then the third thing in this narrative is this. There is this concern of a sister in verses 4 and verse 7. Miriam is the sister of Moses. The name Miriam, it means rebellion. It means rebellion. So Miriam means rebellion. So, this sister, upon seeing her mother preparing his uh, younger brother in a basket, she followed her mother up to the river. And from a distance, he is, she is observing her baby boy. What will happen to him? She saw with her own eyes the enemy is coming. May enemy darating, ano? Sinong enemy nila? The princess. Princess, the princess, the, the, the daughter of the Pharaoh is an enemy. The enemy is coming together with her brides, um, um, ato, bridesmaid, with her maids, entourage, together with her servants. She will be taking a bath and she saw that the princess saw the basket what should be the feeling of the sister? Nakita niya ng kaaway, nakita ng kaaway yung baby, yung basket. It might be fear. Maaring takot. 
she will be afraid that when the princess saw the her baby her uh, baby brother the princess might call a soldier to kill the child or the princess might order one of her slaves to kill the baby it could be a possibility and as she observed siguro kung si Miriam nagpi-pray siro sa Panginoon yon Lord Himala, <laughs> let there be a miracle that my, my baby boy will survive in this situation. She saw that the princess ordered one of her slaves to take the baby or the basket out of the water, opened the basket, and she saw with her own eyes the reaction of the princess when she saw the child in the basket crying there is a concern concern of a sister she saw everything and when she realized that the princess is not intending that the baby boy will die but instead she saw in her eyes that compassion she rushed to her side and asked him Will you please allow me to look for a Hebrew woman, a Hebrew mother who could nurse the child? We could see the concern of a sister. So in verses 5 to 10, we could see the compassion of the princess. When she saw the basket, and when she opened the basket, there is a baby boy crying in the basket. Her heart is filled with compassion. There is a twist in this story. An enemy turned to be a protector. A twist in the story, in the narrative. She is an enemy. She must be an embodiment of the command of the king to kill all baby boy, Hebrew baby boy. And yet, we could see her filled with compassion when she saw the baby crying in the basket. Her heart is melted. And she has no other choice but to accept and to take that boy, that baby, as her own. So the compassion of the princess, instead of calling for a soldier to kill the child, instead of ordering her uh, slaves, one of her slaves, to smash the child in the nearby rock, or to drown the child in the water, she asked Miriam to look for a nurse who could nurse the baby for her. These things, these events, demonstrates the providence of God. So what are the lessons that we could learn from this narrative? First, God is the blesser of those who fear him. In chapter 1, these two midwives fear God that they could not kill the baby boy that is being delivered by a Hebrew woman. And the account, the word of God tells us, because of this fear of the Lord, God blessed them with families. God blessed them with families. I have one question on this. I have a question on this account. I am asking God, God, why did you bless them with families rather than riches? Bakit hindi limpak-limpak na pera ang binigay mo sa kanila, Panginoon? I am asking God, bakit hindi, Panginoon, properties ang ibinigay mo sa dalawang midwives na ito? I am asking God, why not promotion, Lord? For these midwives, why family? Why family? Why not money? Why not properties? What? Why not fame? Why not promotion? Why family? And God is trying to enlighten my mind of this account. That in our generation today, we value money rather than our families. We value our careers rather than our families. We value fame rather than our families. 
We value our achievements, promotions rather than our families. In the front of God, family is the best riches that we could possess. Amen. Pamilya ang pwedeng kayamanang meron lamang tayo. Ngayong buwan ay buwan ng pag-ibig. This month is the love month. Most people are celebrating love. But sometimes, we think that love is about dates, dinner dates. Diba? Minsan iisip natin yun, ang pag-love mo, may dinner date. Minsan, we equate love, sometimes we equate love with roses and chocolates. Sometimes, we equate love with roman romance. Romantic moments. Sometimes that's, those are the things, the thoughts that we have. But I would like to propose to everyone that the best way of celebrating love is accepting your spouse, accepting your partner as part of your family. And if that person is part of your family, your time, your attention, your care, they are the number one recipient of those things. Do we care more sa ating loved one kaysa sa trabaho natin? Do we care more for our loved one than to our hobbies, than to our pastimes. God blessed these midwives not with money, not with promotion, not with properties, not with fame, but God blessed these midwives with families. At the end of the day, the fame will fade away. Our money will melt away, but our families will remain. Friends will go. They just come and go. Friends just come and go. But families will never leave us. Families will never leave us. Spend more moments. Invest on your families. Kung paano kayo nag invest sa karir ninyo, Kung paano kayo nag invest para sa promotion ninyo? Kung paano kayo nag invest para sa mga properties ninyo? Invest more in your families. The second thing that we could learn in this account is this. Our God is like that mother who really cares for us. Our God is like a mother who really cares for us. Whatever the situation that you are in, His loving care is always with us. Sometimes we feel that there is no God, or sometimes we feel that God is absent in action. Sometimes we feel that it's difficult to connect with God, but always remember, God is always by our side. He has promised, and it is true, He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Amen. The third that we could learn from this narrative is this. Our God is like, is our older brother. Jesus is our older brother as, re as revealed in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and in Romans chapter in, in the book of Romans Jesus is our brother who has a concern for us Sa Pilipinas napakahalaga na may kuya ka because an older brother here in the Philippines is the one who is able to fight for you when somebody bullies you Tama no Yan ang mga kuya eh kung binubuli ka nandiyan ang kuya Nalalaban para sa iyo. An older brother is the one when you have a need, 
He will do everything in order to supply you that need. The same is true with our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our older brother. He could relate to our situation. We could call to him. We could confide to him. And we could tell him whatever emotions and feelings that we are experiences. Where we, we at what we are that we are experiencing. And then the third or uh, the fourth lesson that we could learn in this narrative is that our God is the great reconciler. We look at the narrative of the princess, an enemy of the Hebrew people, of the Jewish people. And yet we saw the princess filled with compassion. They were reconciled together. Before we are enemies of God, but today we are reconciled with Him. The same is true that it is the desire of God that we will be reconciled to one another. If God is able and God desires that we will be reconciled to Him, the more that God also desires that we will be reconciled to one another. Sometimes in our relationships, sometimes in our lives, there are people that have, oh, we have been estranged with different people. We are separated with different people. It is because there are irreparable situations. Hindi na ma-repair na sitwasyon. Hirap na hirap na tayo. Minsan sinasabi natin, oh, I've got the full shot. Ayaw ko na. Tama gaya, no? Punong-puno na ako. Ayaw ko na. But God would like to tell us, be reconciled to one another. Pag naiisip mo na parang ang sarap hiwalayan yung asawa ko, the more na mahalin mo siya. May mga times din na parang nagkasamaan na kayo ng loob. Pag-usapan nyo. Pumunta kayo sa Nile River. <laughs> <laughs> and you will find compassion to one another. That's may sabi, mga problema. Mga lumalala ang mga problema kasi wala kayong Nile River na pwede kayong mag-isip-isip at mag-usap-usap at magtinginin sa mata. Eh paano? Pag dumating yung isa, lalabas ka naman. Pag kumakain ka sa lamesa, dumating yung isa, at tapos na ang kain mo kahit unang subo pa lang. O diba? Paano nga magkakaroon ng reconciliation? Hindi pinag-uusapan ang mga problema. Hindi hinaharap ang mga problema. And let that compassion of God fill our hearts so that whatever differences that we have, there will be a reconciliation. So, in this account, Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, we could see the providence of God at work in the lives of the people surrounding Moses and of course to the nation of Israel. And of course, even to our time, we see God as the one that cares for every situation that we have.